The Time of Dragons by Alice Urquhart Rothos. Book review. Uh, so this is an interesting one. This is kind of one of those books I never read of, would have read otherwise, but just happened to stumble upon. I was in uh, the used book section of my local bookstore and was just kind of leafing through the fantasy section. I, I'm a bit of a fantasy nerd. Uh, and this book uh, jumped out at me just because it was so old. Uh, you know, I have one of those kind of old blue bindings. You know, you can just kind of tell if a book is old by, by the cover. Uh, and I was curious what an older fantasy book would be. Uh, this is somewhat of a digression, but my, my general understanding is that Tolkien kind of created the modern fantasy genre. Uh, and kind of mass fantasy publishing is kind of something that came after Tolkien. So when I, when I saw this book that looked like it was as old as Tolkien, I, I was kind of curious what it was. And I picked it up and kind of right in the opening cover, there are all these ink drawings of the main characters. And it was kind of done in the style of, you know, those old ink illustrations of the books from the 1940s and 50s. Uh, reminded me of all the books that used to be in my grandmother's attic, uh, the old Hardy Boys books. Uh, if I'm not doing a good job of describing what these looked like, I'll, uh, I'll put a picture, uh, a scanned picture of these ink drawings from the, from the opening cover of the book, no, inside cover of the book. I'll put that in the description so you can click on that image and kind of see the picture. Um, yeah, so it, it looked interesting and I was leafing through it and um, even without reading the whole thing, just kind of leafing through it, I realized pretty quickly that this was not a fantasy book at all. Uh, the dragons were apparently metaphorical dragons, like there were no real dragons in this book. It was just kind of a book about World War II. So I, I just kind of put it back, uh, not what I was looking for, and walked away. And then, over the next couple days, I was just kind of thinking to myself, I wonder what that book was actually about. Was it any good? Those ink drawings kind of, you know, looked interesting. Uh, it just kind of stuck in my mind for whatever reason. So a few days later, I went back to the same bookstore, and it was still there. And I just bought it, uh, and uh, I read through it. Um, and it was, you know, because it was an older book, it did not have a cover jacket, or maybe it, if it ever did have a cover jacket at one time, it disappeared long ago. So there was no information about the book other than those kind of ink drawings on the inside cover. Uh, there was, you know, nothing. So I went into this book because, you know, usually when you read a book, you've got an idea of kind of what it is from the back cover, right? There are these blurbs, there are, you know, praise by critics or something like that. Uh, this I had no information, which is a bit unusual in this day and age. Um, but it's interesting. It's, it's interesting to read a book like that and have no idea where it was going. I mean, I knew it was about World War II just because I had been flipping through it. But other than that... Um, yeah, to just go into something completely blind and just kind of see where it goes. And it, it went in some places I was not entirely expecting. Um, I actually put a review uh, of this book back on my blog way back in early 2007. Uh, and then since then, over the years, uh, I've gotten a few comments from fans of this book. Um, I had assumed this was just kind of, you know, one of those uh, forgotten books which, you know, was published one year and completely forgotten about and it was just by chance I stumbled upon it. But it, it appears that the author does have a bit of a cult following uh, and that this book in particular really does have its fans. So um, I'm going to give it a mediocre review, but take my opinion with a grain of salt because there are some people out there who really do love this book. Okay, um, so uh, the, the book, the first 
third of the book is about a guy named Newt Rogerland. I uh, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Who is the Norwegian uh, council in Shanghai? Counts, council in the sense of like an ambassador. And the first third of the book is all about his kind of marital disasters, his kind of love disasters, and how he came to end up with three different daughters by three different women. So, first daughter is with a French woman, second daughter is with a Chinese woman, uh, third daughter is with a Norwegian woman. Uh, and then eventually, Nurt Rogerland passes away, and Aunt Helen takes over raising the family. Uh, and at this point, kind of the direction of the book shifted radically. Uh, before then, we were reading about kind of uh, the adventures of a man in Shanghai. Then all of a sudden, we're reading about uh, a family of girls growing up under the ant. They're all sisters, but each one has a different mother, right? One is half French, one is half Chinese, one is full Norwegian. Um, and they all kind of become teenagers and young women and are looking for love. And then I thought, ah, right, this is a romance novel. And I, I'm, I'm not gen generally a big romance novel fan. I, yeah. <laughs> so ha had I known this is where the story was going, I might never have picked it up. But yeah, it turns out this is where it was going. Um, yeah, by the way, I, the, the author is not English. This is translated into English. I originally on my blog made the mistake of saying it was a Norwegian author. I just assumed it was a Norwegian author because the story was about a Norwegian family. Uh, turns out the author, Alice, Alice Urquhart Rothals, who I'm also probably pronouncing that wrong, uh, was a German. Um, I've been having a hard time finding information in English on her. There's a Wikipedia page on her, but it's all in German. I, I can't find an English Wikipedia page. Anyways, um, so as these three daughters grow up and kind of look for love in various places, it's set up, set against the backdrop of World War II in Asia. Now, uh, interesting that this is about World War II since the author is German, but it, it takes place in Asia, so it's mostly about the Pacific side of the war. Um, and there are various subplots about underground resistance to the Japanese, various spy rings. Uh, these are all interesting, um, but the romance is the main thing. So these kind of subplots just kind of serve to further the romantic storylines. For example, there, the, you know, there's a French spy who's hiding out in Cambodia, uh, which, which is kind of an interesting little subplot. But the focus is kind of, well, he's hiding out in Cambodia, uh, he remembers how much he really loves the girl he left behind. Or there's another girl who was mistaken for a spy, put into a Japanese prison, but this is just kind of a setup so she can be rescued by a dashing American doctor. Um, yeah, if it's not already clear from this, uh, there's a bit of like cheesy kind of pulp romance, kind of, you know, like the old fashioned romance novels with the, the girl in distress getting kind of rescued by, by a dashing hero. But that's all part of the fun of it. You know, it's just kind of a nice, old, cheesy spy romance novel. Um, now, because this is kind of taking place against the backdrop of World War II in Asia, there are a lot of Japanese characters in here. Uh, now, I... I actually, I've lived in Japan for eight years, so uh, I, I've had a fair amount of interactions with Japanese people. Uh, I thought their portrayal in this book was fairly balanced. Uh, they're the bad guys, obviously, but they're not portrayed overly negatively. Uh, and the author, Alice Urquhart Rosaltz, has clearly done her research. Uh, she knows all about Japanese culture. Um, so again, going off kind of a comment somebody left on the old blog, uh, somebody said that she actually physically went to all these locations to research them. And now I'm not sure if that's 
true or if that's based on supposition. Uh, the supposition being back in you know the 1950s and when Alice at Kurtz Rosales was writing this, you couldn't just go on Google to find out about Japan. Uh, although they, they had libraries back then, didn't they? I don't know. Anyways, uh, she's done her research. She knows a lot about Japanese culture. My only complaint, if I had to make a complaint, uh, is that the Japanese characters are a little bit overly researched. Uh, they're always kind of using haikus or talking about tea ceremonies or something like that. Uh, the, the, yeah, they're always kind of in character as Japanese. Uh, and of course, you know, if you if you've lived in Japan or knew any Japanese people or whatever, uh, you, you know that most of the time, most of the time they're just normal people. These kind of very distinctive cultural characteristics which everybody obsesses on are just kind of a small part of the of the of somebody's personality. Uh, basically, humans are humans. Um, but yeah. Overall, I, I thought it was a balanced and sympathetic portrait of the Japanese people, even though they were supposed to be the bad guys in this book. So, yeah, uh, I wasn't a huge fan of this book, but I did kind of enjoy the fun of it to a certain extent. And there are people who really do love this book. So, uh, yeah, take my opinion with a grain of salt. Maybe check it out if, if you can track down a copy.